right then let's start from the beginning so in this basic we will be talking about concept of programming and what all can be done with the help of programming so without further ado let's move on and ask us a basic question that basic question is nothing but why programming so what programming is actually a programming is nothing but telling your computer what exactly it has to do programming gives you to gives you the ability to solve complex problem not within few minutes but rather within few seconds and with the help of programming you can analyze the problem which you have and develop a logic and that logic you can implement in your own code or in your own programming language so let's move on further and let's see how we can do all this so without further delay let's see what a program constitutes of so any program in this world will constitute of three basic things these are input a black box which we will be talking in a bit and an output so the input to a program is nothing but a problem statement so the problem statement could be as simple as adding of two numbers such as add a plus b and give me the output so a plus b is my problem statement now this problem statement is given into a black box now this black box is nothing but an algorithm which is running in our program so there can be many different types of algorithm and this algorithm is directly proportional to our problem statement so the problem statement defines what algorithm we have to use so algorithms are nothing but set of rules which are needed to be followed in order to solve that particular problem statement so the algorithm can be simple for a simple problem statement and vice versa for a complex problem statement now if you will the next comes the output the output is nothing but the solution so in the input we give it the problem statement then the black box which is nothing but the algorithm solves that problem statement and produces an output which is solution and if we see computers are literally dumb because inherent inherently computers do not know what it has to do so it is the duty of the programmer to tell the computer what all things it has to compute the basic thing which the computer can do is computing but what it has to compute it doesn't know so how to tell the computer what it has to do is by typing your own program by typing your program the computer will get to know what exactly it has to solve and how to implement and how to solve that problem is by developing the logic but here comes the problem if you even have the logic you, with you but implementing that logic into the into the language which the computer understand is bit kind of difficult because as we all know computer understands nothing but ones and zeros which we human rather don't understand if you will so and we poor human just can't speak in regional or international language and so how to solve this problem now so this problem was actually solved few uh, many years ago by a group of programmers who just told okay let's come to a middle ground why not we both interact in a unified kind of language which is nothing but a programming language so they made a deal and both of them agreed like the computer also said okay i can understand your language now and the human can also now talk and that uh, language was nothing but the programming language which both of them understand very easily and let's see now further by having a uh, knowledge of pro what programming language is now we can have a look at one of the example over here so in this example what i have are uh, three different places and in one of the place i will put a human let's say he is on the place number 1 now i want to move this human from place number 1 to place number 3 so if i were to solve this problem i would just have told this human that hey human why don't you move two space apart so he would be uh, like this 
one and then two. So, oops, sorry. He would be like one and two. And he has reached the goal. But in order to make the computer solve this problem, it is a bit kind of different. And over here, we have the concept what we were talking about is developing the logic. So how to develop the logic and implement that logic in your program so that the computer solves your problem. So to develop your logic, you have to understand few basic concepts in the logic, which are nothing but the building block of your logic. So let's look at those building block and what those building block has the significance. So the first block of your logic is the start block. Now this start block saves the current situation of your problem. So in, in this case of moving the human from place one to place number three, the current situation of the human is that he is in place one. So that is what my start block will signify. It just says that my human is currently on situation on the position number one and I want to move that human from position number one to position number three. Now, after the start block, there are something which are known as the functional block. So there could be one functional block or two functional blocks or n number of functional block in your logic. But the basic idea of the functional block is to do some kind of processing so that it moves from the start block to the end block. And end block over here is nothing but your end result which you want, which you want or the output which you want of the problem statement. Okay, so in between the start and the end blocks are your functional blocks and they do the processing in order to solve your problem from start to end. So now let's look at our previous problem and let's see how we could develop our logic using this particular template. Now again, as we saw, we will have our start block which just says that my human is currently on position number one. and my functional block this time would be move ahead by one. So this makes my human go to position number two from position number one. Afterwards, the other functional block would say, okay, you're not currently on position number three. So let's move you again by one. So again, my human will move from position number two to position number three. And now voila, he's at position number three. And that's all we wanted. So we will end my logic. So that's how, that's how you develop your logic. And if you have noticed, there is too much detail into your logic now. And you don't want that all of these detail to be there present when, when you write your own program. Because whenever you're writing your program, you don't have to see all those internal mechanisms which are currently happening in your program. So what you all have to know is how your programming language is going from your problem statement to the final output. So now let's take this logic number, let's take this logic as logic number one and develop another more optimized logic and to optimize the logic you first have to understand something which is known as abstraction so now let's see what abstraction is and how we can use the concept of abstraction to optimize our logic now understanding abstraction is nothing and is really simple like abstraction simply means to hide the internal details which are not necessary to the final output such as you can understand abstraction in terms like for example you have bought your new shiny car and you are going for a test drive now in order to test drive you don't have to know how your engine is working or how your gear transmission system works you just have to know how should i accelerate my car or how should i break it whenever i need it or how to simply steer it left or right you just have to know that all thing and nothing about the internal mechanics of the car or anything related to it. So that is what the concepts of, concept of abstraction teaches us. It just says, focus on your problem, not the internal details. So let's see how can we use this concept of abstraction in our logic. And after using the concept of abstraction, I will have something as the start block. Then next will come just 
a one functional block which will say hey let's move her head by two rather than in steps of one and one and then my end result because I have reached the position number three and if you want to go into further detail like what is inside the move ahead by two functional block it is nothing but just it says move ahead by one and again move ahead by one so this is the internal mechanics and if you don't want to know or you just want to hide it you can use the concept of abstraction and it will make your logic more optimized and more cleaner to look at and if you want to even further journalize your problem now suppose I want to move my human from position number one to let's say position number hundred now in order to do that I can still use my logic version number two but in case of the abstraction area it will be far too many sentences and it will be much more cumbersome to write all those sentences again and again and again like I have to write move ahead by one hundred times or even if I change let's say tomorrow I go and I say okay human now you have to move by five hundred so again and again I have to change whole ma of my source code and it will be too much cumbersome for the programmer as well so in order to do that or to make the logic more journalized what we can have is something shown over here so let's suppose this is my logic version number three and I am having a start block and then again like we did we will just make it journalized functional block and I will just say it move ahead by n and again I will end it now over here the n can be any real positive integer it could be one two three four five anything it could be and over here I don't have to change my whole source code just to make it compatible with n it is journalized now and uh, the matter of fact that it is journalized is due to our programming language provides some special features and we will be talking a lot about special features in the upcoming videos so now let's see which kind of special feature it has used the blocks which are highlighted in green over here are nothing but the special feature inside the programming language by default so what it does over here in this functional block is it checks if it is moved by end or not let's say I want to move ahead uh, my human by 10 so it will be like check if moved by 10 or not since I'm I haven't even moved ahead by even one so it will move ahead by one and then it will repeat again the same thing now since I have moved by one and it will again check if if, if one is equal to 10 which is not so it will again move ahead by one and okay now it's two equal to ten no it is, isn't so it will move ahead by one and again and again until ten is equal to ten once it is encountered ten equal to ten then it will end so that will be my logic so now have the understanding how to develop the logic now we will see how to use this understanding of developing the logic in the practical section and we will just write few more codes and we will get into that uh, like what you say the muscle memory will we will be developing so that you just know how to write your own program without much more efforts and we will see in the next upcoming video so for now any questions hey there well I have some questions which I would like to ask to you on behalf of my spectacular audience alright so the very first question I would like to ask you is what all different algorithms can be implemented according to you yeah so it's a really nice question so there are many different kind of algorithm that can be implemented and in a few in the upcoming videos you will be learning about what all algorithms are there like the most prominent one is divide and conquer so that we will be seeing with a practical example how efficiently we can uh, make our search algorithm so divide and conquer is basically a search algorithm or it can also and it is also named as binary search so all those algorithm we will be studying in depth and because the algorithm is basically the heart of the any program so you need to know algorithm very well oh I see well thank you for the answer now my next question would be how many program languages that is how many programming languages can a computer understand 
Yeah, again, a good question. How many programming languages does the computer understand? So there are lots many of programming language the computer can understand, but the basic of any computer language is just to tell the computer what it has to do. The syntax can be different. The method of even implementing the program can be different. But the basic goal is to make the computer understand what it has to do. And so uh, due to the fact that the there are many programming languages, the basic thing which any programming language follows is the step which I have already explained you. You have to develop a logic and according to that logic, you have to implement your code and it has it can be in any um, format or it can be written in any programming language but the basic idea is you have to first of all develop your logic and then implement that logic into the programming language okay that's great well the next question would be why computers only understand binary language that is the languages of zeros and ones well, that is a question that is hovering around my mind for such a long time. Okay, why do computer understands just ones and zeros? So the fact that the computer understands ones and zeros is because how the computer is built. So the computer is nothing but just a group of billions and billions of transistors. And these transistors work in harmony to to create what uh, we generally know as a architecture so it is the duty of the computer architect to develop or to design a computer which can understand ones and zeros so uh, on that computer architecture or on the top of the computer architecture what lies your operating system and inside the operating system what you run is the programming language so in short the thing which your program does uh, it does is given to the operating system and then operating system looks into your into your running program like what all thing you require and then uh, gives the all those resources which you require to you and in order to give those resources which you, your program require the operating system has talk has to talk to the architecture uh, inside the computer or the architecture which the computer is implemented on and because the architecture is is implement which is implemented in your computer is nothing but just a millions and billions of transistor working in harmony and all those transistor knows nothing but ones and zeros so that's why or in short your computer just understands ones and zeros and nothing apart from that and in upcoming videos we will be talking about how we can make those ones and zeros a bit more user friendly so we will be seeing about the number system or the number system which your computer generally understand which is nothing but the decimal number system we will be looking at we will be looking at hexadecimal number system and a few octal but the main idea will be about the hexadecimal okay then i guess all doubts are clear so see you next time and with this i am ending this episode with a short note this is the programming language series thank you